Why are some people hit harder by COVID and others not? Why is a 20 year old with the disease on death's door while say a 70 year old dodges the need for critical interventions like being in the ICU and on ventilators? That's what we're gonna be covering today. Welcome to the Legendary Life Podcast. I'm health expert, Ted Rice. And what we do on this show is break down science-based information on how to lose fat, prevent disease, and live a longer, healthier, legendary life. And on today's episode, we're going to be covering this important question, why does COVID kill some people but not others? And we're going to dive into the science today. And if this is your first time listening to the Legendary Life Podcast and you like what you hear, hit that subscribe button so that every time one of my episodes, Real Talk Fridays or interviews goes live, you'll be the first to know. And if you've been listening for a while, you're probably aware that we have a challenge going on. You missed the most recent one. It's already kicked off. But what you can do is go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash challenge and sign up for the next one. So let's jump into this today, where I'm going to break down the science for you because I'll I'll be honest, I've been, as many of you know, from the Real Talk Friday episodes, I was in Columbia, got a call from my dad, ended up here. I've been really busy. I haven't been paying attention to the COVID stuff so much. I've been taking precautions and doing all sorts of other things, but I just saw today, which I'm recording this on July 4th. So hope all my Americans had a great 4th of July, even though (laughs) there was the fireworks were canceled here in Vero Beach where I am, but hope you had a great one anyway. I hope you made it work no matter what. And if you didn't, you need to be listening to my Real Talk Friday episodes where we can create a mental shift for you. So back to this idea, why, what is going on here? What are the new developments with COVID, what do we know about it that we didn't before? But that's what we're going to jump into. And before I do, I want to tell you, I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. Such a cheesy joke, but had to make it. And I am also not an epidemiologist or anything like that. But what I am is someone who's passionate about this, passionate about, I can't say giving you the truth, but providing a more, because what is the truth right now? It's really hard to figure out, right? You know what I mean? You do a Google search and it's just ridiculous what comes up. Like, what are the the death rate? But then it seems like, okay, well, you know, if you die from a heart attack, but you had COVID, was it the COVID that killed you? Let's just mark it as a COVID death. And the testing numbers, are we seeing more results because uh, seeing more positive cases because of increased testing? Or is there something else? You know, it's like, what the hell is going on? Nobody knows. Doesn't seem like anyone knows, and make sure if you have any conspiracy Carl friends, make sure you're not listening to them. Listen, I watched a YouTube video. Listen, listen, the government's covering, doing a cover-up. Bill Gates and all the uh, wealthy elite, uh, what do you call it, New World Order people. And you're like, okay, Carl, cool. Uh, uh, where'd you, uh, where'd you find the Where'd you find the information about this? Well, listen, I did a lot of research. Okay, cool. Uh, What research did you do, Carl? Well, listen, I I was on YouTube just looking at different YouTube videos. And then there was one with a guy with a really good voice and microphone, and and he put together a great presentation. I mean, that's like where we're at right now, right? Everyone thinks they're, everyone thinks that they have the answer. And I'll tell you, I I don't want to get too far off on this because it'll turn into a Real Talk Friday episode, but Part of the challenge that everyone is facing is who do you listen to? Who are you getting your information from? And the majority of people are not people you want to get your information from. So it's really hard to know what the real story. But the story here in Florida is, man, there's there's a big uptick in cases following the reopening of, you know, people are going nuts. They want to get back to work. They want to go out and go to the bars again, go to the restaurants again. We had 10,000 cases in one day. Actually, where I am in Indian River County, we had a doubling of cases. There were only 365 cases. And now it's like, boom, it's like 800 and something all of a sudden. So I started seeing that and I'm more concerned um, after some of the things that I read especially because like I'm helping my dad out. I need to make sure I don't get sick because if I give it to him, 
he's not in great shape. So I've been doing a bit more research, <laughs> watching them YouTube videos. No, but what, what I've done, I've, I've been looking into the studies and I'm going to be sharing with you some studies today. I'm going to be sharing with you my opinion on it, obviously. Like, uh, you, you got to take what I say. I don't, want, I don't want to say with a grain of salt because I'm a little bit more careful, let's say. I'm not a, a genius with this stuff, but I'm a little bit more careful about what I say and about what I promote. And when I uh, have an opinion about something, I'll make sure you understand it's just my opinion versus what data is out there. So that's what I'm going to do. So be careful whom you listen to, even me, right? I'm doing my best here and I'm going to tell you I do a really good job. And if you have been listening for a while, you know that, but you got to be, you got to use critical thinking. You can't just say, well, Ted uh, really sounds like a guy I'd have a blue label with. You got to, you got to think about the actual things that I'm saying, the data, the, you got to think about that stuff. And, and not just with me, with every single person. So let's get into it. Why are some people hit harder by COVID and others spared? Well, what we know for sure is that underlying health conditions seem to be and again, even just listen to my wording there, what we know for sure, and then seem to be. But it's it's fairly clear that underlying health conditions are thought to be or, or seem to be an important factor influencing the severity of COVID cases. So there was a, a study published in June on June 15th in the, the journal Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report. Sounds like something you should subscribe to, right? Oh, what what does this month's issue of Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report say, right? Uh, what they found was a study of more than 1.3 million COVID-19 cases in the United States found that rates of hospitalizations were six times higher and rates of death were 12 times higher among COVID-19 patients that had underlying conditions. Which ones? Most commonly heart disease, diabetes, and chronic lung disease. And in general, there seem to be seven different factors that have major have a major influence on COVID-19 outcomes. Number one is age. We're going to dive into each of these a little bit, and then we're going to talk about what to do, what you can do, or what, what I'm thinking about doing. and um, what I would recommend doing if someone just, a friend just asked me. So number one is age. Number two is diabetes, both type one and type two. Type one is the one that you're born with. It's an autoimmune condition where your pancreas doesn't create insulin. Type two is what you give yourself from sitting on your ass and shoving food in your mouth until, you know. Third is heart disease and hypertension, right? Fourth is smoking. Fifth is actually blood type. Six is obesity. And then seventh is genetic factors. So let's go one by one there. And I'm just going to try to keep, keep it relevant and keep it kind of short. So about eight out of 10 deaths associated with COVID-19 in the US have occurred in adult ages 65 and older. So age is a factor here. Here's the thing. This trend might, they're not, it's not like uh, being old is a death sentence because what they believe, what the experts believe, and yes, I put weight on expert opinions rather than conspiracy Carl or know it all Nancy, whatever. Well, many elderly people have more chronic medical conditions, don't they? And their immune system isn't as good as it used to be. So it leaves them more vulnerable to viral infections, diabetes. So, so what I want to tell you, what, let me open up that just a bit more. So it's not like, oh man, I just, I was 64 yesterday, but now I'm 65. And now my risk of dying from COVID just changed because now I'm in that age bracket. That's not how it works. It seems to be the more health issues you have, right? So that's a, that's the difference between causation and correlation. It's not age that's killing people, but the things uh, is what they think, but the things that commonly come with getting older, the things that most elderly people have commonly have is probably the best way to say it. So diabetes, 
The most common form of uh, uh, diabetes is type 2, right? And that has to do with insulin resistance. Your body cells just don't respond to the hormone insulin. So as a result, let's say you eat a meal, let's say you eat some bread or you know whatever, fruit, anything. The sugar, it gets digested, ra- rises, uh, raises sorry, your blood sugar levels. And what happens is your body releases insulin to drive the blood sugar and other nutrients to cells that need it. But because your cells are insulin resistant, it, it doesn't get absorbed. It just circulates in your bloodstream and damages things, damages everything from like, I have a client right now who has some damage in her eye from diabetes. You may know people who've Uh, have nerve damage in their feet from diabetes and end up getting their toes cut off or foot cut off. So high blood sugar is very damaging. And we'll talk a little bit about what causes diabetes, but just understand if you have pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes, in other words, you were born with it because your pancreas makes little to no insulin in the first place, you are nearly three 0.7 0.7 times more likely to have a critical case of COVID-19, according to a review of 13 studies. Now, that's a, what's called a meta-analysis. So instead of just looking at the results of one study, it looks at the results of 13. So big deal. And heart disease and hypertension. So people with conditions that affect the cardiovascular system, such as heart disease, there's many different forms of heart disease. My dad has congenital heart, uh, I'm con- not congenital, congestive heart failure. There's also coronary heart disease, right? Congestive heart failure is when your heart is so weak, it can't pump the blood effectively throughout your body. So fluid pools in either your organs or, or your legs. Coronary heart disease is when your arteries start getting blocked off. So what they found is that people who have heart disease or hypertent and or hypertension generally suffer worse complications from COVID-19 than those with no existing heart conditions, according to the American Heart Association. And smoking. <laughs> I mean, the virus, according to the things that I've read, attacks your lungs. It seems to also attack your, attack your heart, by the way, or in some cases, attacks your heart. But uh, what they found is that A study of more than 1,000 patients in China found that 12.3% of the current smokers included in the study were admitted to an ICU, were placed on a ventilator, or died, as compared to 4.7% of non-smokers. That should not be that big of a surprise to you. (laughs) So several, and let's talk about obesity. Several earlier studies have suggested a link between obesity and more severe COVID-19 cases in people. In fact, if you go to the CDC website, they say that a BMI of 40 and above means that you're uh, at very high risk for complications. Now, again, not all obese people are equal here. It's not clear why obesity is linked to more hospitalizations and more severe COVID-19 cases, but what the authors of a study In in one study uh, put forth is obesity is generally thought of as a risk factor for severe infection in general. For example, those who were obese had longer and more severe disease complications during the swine flu epidemic. Also, obese patients might have reduced lung capacity or increased inflammation in the body. So it may not be exactly that obesity itself, like, oh, if you have a certain body fat percentage, just like if you're a certain age, it has to do with the complications. So people with obesity without disease, probably because they exercise and have healthy habits, because yes, you can be obese and have healthier habits and be healthier than someone who's obese and doesn't have any healthy habits. But uh, it seems like if you have complications, especially blood sugar uh, related complications or heart disease complications, you are in a much different category than someone who, yes, they're obese, but they don't have those issues. A while back, I don't know if Todd, if you still listen, but Todd had obesity, but had no had uh, good uh, blood work 
and didn't have any complications, but he got concerned about it because it seems like if you are obese, it's just a matter of time before you're going to have a problem, not whether you're going to have a problem. But of course, you know, <laughs> if you are, if you're still alive on a long enough timeline, you're going to have a problem no matter what. We all get sick. So blood type also seems to play an issue here. In a, a recent study of blood type in COVID-19 published in April 11th, published on April 11th, scientists look at, looked at uh, 1,559 people, and of those people, 682 tested positive. And what they found were, well, they tested them for SARS, right? SARS-CoV-2, so COVID-19, in other words. But what they found is that individuals with A blood types a positive and A negative, were 33% more likely to test positive than other blood types. And both O negative and O positive uh, blood types were less likely to test positive than other blood groups. So why is that happening? What are the significance between having an A blood type or an O blood type? Well, the scientists aren't exactly sure. <laughs> but what, what a blood type indicates is that there's certain antigens that cover the surfaces of our blood cells. So certain blood types have certain antigens that cover the, the blood cells and viruses might be able to get into a specific, uh, I'm trying to say it in a way where it doesn't, where I'm not using too much medical jargon. So I'm kind of stumbling over myself here, but it seems like the virus can get into certain, can unlock certain surface antigens easier than others. And it appears that blood type A seems to be, you know, the blood type that it can open and get into the cells much easier. What can you do about that? Nothing. <laughs> so, so, but it's something, if you are a positive or negative blood type, you might want to double down on some of the other precautions. You might want to take a bit more precautions without going crazy, of course. And also there are genetic factors involved. And there's a bunch of research groups trying to pinpoint exactly where these vulnerabilities, these genetic, genetic vulnerabilities lie in our genetic code. And I'm not going to go into it because it's a bit over my head. But what they found, it seems like these genetic differences between us may make us more susceptible or less susceptible. And I was really curious at, at the beginning, right, about that because it was like, well, what are the, why are some people getting it and getting it worse and others aren't? And um, it seemed to, at, at first it was like, wow, is this like a genetic thing? Like it doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds and you know you have diabetes, but you have a special set of genes, are you just not gonna get it? That was what was so scary at first. Because that would mean like your genes are a death sentence, you know, or a you know a suffer sentence. I guess we we could say, but it seems like okay, this is this is a part of it, but it is not the main issue. So what can we do? Let's get to that now. Well, genes and blood type aren't under our control, but what if you do any? If you have a type A, either type a positive or type A negative, you might need to be a little bit more um, on your guard. And how much more? I, you know, that's the answer I don't think anyone has. And on the other hand, conversely, if you're type O negative or type O positive and think that you can relax, that may not necessarily be the case. So keep that in mind. But what we can do is we can look at the things that we can affect. So we can't affect our chronological age. I'm 43, and on February 2nd of 2021, I'll be 44. No stopping that. I Google trying to look at how to stop it, and there was one person who sells a, a solution, but it's 997, and I'm just kidding. There's no stopping that, even though I'm sure someone will probably sell you that. But what we can control is what you might call our biological age. Because if you're 30 years old and you are diabetic, you have type 2 diabetes, obesity, you've got some plaque forming in your arteries and hypertension, 
you're not going to, you're going to have a really hard time and you're, you're, you could be arguably, you could be said to be arguably biologically older than a person who's 50 and has healthy body fat levels, healthy blood sugar levels, no cholesterol issues, good, uh, blood pressure, exercises regularly, sleeps well, manages stress, and just has an awesome kick-ass life. So let's get into it a little bit more. Just wanted to preface what we're about to talk about with those statements. This episode is sponsored by Organifi. Do you want to know a secret that all my coaching clients follow? It's really simple, but powerful. Add vegetables into each meal. But let's be honest, most of us, including myself, don't eat the recommended servings of vegetables and fruits each day. So for those of us who are on the go or have trouble eating healthy, having a greens powder makes it easy to get your greens in every single day, no matter how busy you are. And that's why I use and recommend Organifi Green Juice, a superfood powder that you just add water to so that you can get your greens in even when you're on the go. The best thing about Organifi Green Juice is that it actually tastes great. But don't believe me, try it for yourself. And use the code TED20, that's capital T-E-D, the number 20, at www.organifi.com. That's Organifi.com to receive 20% off your first order. But hurry, this is a limited time discount for Legendary Life listeners. Now, back to the episode. So number one, lose fat. Why? Why that one first? Well, diabetes and obesity, or obesity in general, again, connected with more severe cases of COVID-19. More specifically, diabetes, people with blood sugar issues seem to really get their asses kicked. Well, should I just go on a low-carb diet? No, you can. That will bring your blood sugar better. In fact, If you do have diabetes and you're not up to the task of losing fat, being on a low carb diet that will lower your, or any type of diet that will lower your blood sugar seems to be the best bet. But if you're going to do some special type of diet, why not just lose fat? But I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, Then you need to listen to this podcast more because we're not going to get into that. But fat is what's causing the insulin resistance. One of the major issues with insulin resistance is where the insulin resistance is happening. And one of those places is in the muscles. So if you are not challenging your muscles and you're eating more calories than you burn, you start to store fat. Actually, it's just the second thing. If you're eating more energy, more energy coming in than going out, you start to store fat. Simple as that. And part of where that fat gets stored is inside your muscles. It's not just, it's not just around your waistline or your, your hips and thighs, whatever. It's inside your muscles. It's also around your organs. And you should know that. Have you ever seen a ribeye steak? That's muscle and there's fat all up in it. Marbled meat. And if your meat is more marbled, <laughs> sounds terrible, right? Thinking of ourselves as uh, steaks. But if you've got more marbled meat, more insulin resistance, more issues, more likely of developing diabetes. So what's the answer? Lose fat. How do you do that? Sign up to my challenge and I'll show you how. How about that? Legendarylifepodcast.com slash challenge. So the next thing you can do is improve your cardiovascular conditioning. Why? Part of the issue seems to be this uh, virus can affect your heart and also people with heart conditions they have more complications, more severe cases of COVID-19. And I should, let me, let me retract something. I should have just said exercise because uh, your heart's always beating when you're exercising. Lifting weights will help you get in better cardiovascular condition unless you're just doing really low, really heavy weights and resting three minutes. You know who you are. I do five sets of three and basically work out for about seven seconds, 10 seconds, and then rest three to five minutes in between sets. You're not doing a lot of exercise, even though you're lifting heavy weights. 
So get in better shape, work higher rep ranges, do more cardiovascular conditioning, do more cardio. But what about the HIIT? Yeah, sure. If you're in good enough shape to do that, do it. Definitely do it. Get your heart strong. I have a I bragged on the last Real Talk Friday that my resting heart rate is quite low and I'm happy about it. And it's a conscious thing that I've done. I want a low resting heart rate. It's actually an, uh, another risk factor for disease. And you can, it's something that you absolutely have control over. Another thing you can do is to improve your air quality. So if you're smoking, please stop. But not that many people smoke anymore. And I don't know how many people who smoke would listen to the Legendary Life podcast. Now, I could be wrong, but if you're a smoker, get that nicotine patch. Nicotine's not the problem. It's the carcinogens in the actual smoke. By the way, you can also improve your air quality by getting an air filter, getting a HEPA air filter in your house. And if you live in a place that's polluted, like I've been unfortunately living in in Bangkok, in Thailand, very polluted, uh, quite polluted in Medellin, Colombia as well. Improve the air quality. Be more on top of your air quality. It's something that nobody that I don't hear people talking about that much in general, right? People just want to strangle each other and argue online about nutrition, but this is something that's big time important. You can also improve the nutrient quality of your food. Getting more omega-3 fatty acids from what you eat is probably a good idea. Getting more anthocyanins from eating purple uh, Japanese potatoes and uh, blueberries is a good idea. Blueberries in particular have quite a bit of research on them showing all types of improvements and blood flow and, and other things. We'll do that on another podcast, go into foods and their effects how to optimize your the nutrient quality of your nutrition. But look at it. I mean, here's one thing that I probably don't talk enough about is that you can get lean by just creating a calorie deficit, but it doesn't mean you're as healthy as you could be or eating as well as you could be because the nutrient quality of your food is very important, just like how many calories you're eating or the macronutrient distribution of your food. So improve the nutrient quality. And if I've kind of harped on you a little bit, because I'm like, hey, you know, I've, ta- I've told stories about people who are like, listen, but I eat so healthy. And I'm like, look, you're overweight. You're obese. There's nothing more you need to know. What you're doing isn't healthy. But still, if you're making better choices, keep doing that, regardless of uh, whether you're overweight or obese. Another thing is improve your sleep. Are you losing sleep trying to stay up on the latest COVID-19 information or how the economy is rising and falling right now, you better check the return on that investment because sleep gives you a big return while, uh, you know, just staying up to quote unquote, be more informed may not. And um, the next thing I want to mention is smart supplementation. So I want to say this, I feel like in our current climate here, we've got two Groups of people, we've got the alternative crazies who are like, just take vitamin C, echinacea, ginkgo biloba, what else? Uh, elderberry extract, and maybe drink some MMS, and you can you can cure the coronavirus in 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 one day or whatever they say. And then you have the mainstream medical people saying, listen. Wash your hands, cover your face with a face mask, which are obviously good suggestions, by the way. Unless you're American, not going to tell. You can, no, I'm just going to say you can pry that mask off my face with your cold, dead hands or whatever. There's that saying. Anyway, I'm getting lost here. But uh, Americans don't like being told what to do, especially with the face mask thing. It's kind of funny. So mainstream medicine doesn't really place a big, importance on trying to improve your immune system. And it's like, man, and I think they try to avoid that because there's no specific studies on immune, you know, doing things to boost your immune system and COVID-19. Here's the issue that I take with that personally, is that I understand and appreciate their, let's say, conservative approach 
right? Because they're, they're not going to tell you, look, there's no evidence to support that is what they'll say. But at the same time, it's like, come on, man. Like, it's, it's not like there's a high risk to getting better sleep. That's going to just improve everything. Or taking vitamin C, which by the way, if you're just, if you don't train hard, if you're not exposed to harsh environmental temperatures, vitamin C doesn't really help prevent colds, but it does seem to help people who are athletes who do exercise frequently or they're exposed to harsh environmental temperatures. So, um, but it does seem to help shorten the duration of a cold. So I take vitamin C every day, a thousand milligrams every day. And I would even try to experiment with more. Why? Because there's evidence showing that can fight COVID-19. No, no such evidence exists. And we ain't going to get that for a really long time. So I'm here to kind of bridge the gap a little bit and say, you know what? Let the, let the conservative medical professionals tell you like what we have evidence for and what we don't have evidence for. But it's like, it's not going to kill you to take some vitamin C uh, every day. I guess what they don't want is to for people to walk around, hey, I'm not going to wash my hands. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to socially distance because my immune system's strong and I'm not 65 or older. So don't be an idiot like that. Do Take all the precautions. You don't want to get this stuff, get this disease, although uh, unfortunately, Probably most of us are going to end up getting it before they get a vaccine. At least that's what some experts have suggested. But do it all. That's what I'm doing. You better believe I have a mask, an N95 mask. But I'm not crazy about it either, right? I wear it, but um, you know I'm not crazy about it. But I'm also taking things to help me sleep, things to reduce my stress. So I take magnesium L3 and 8 at night, really uh, enjoying that. Magnesium L3 and 8 is a version of magnesium that passes your blood brain barrier, gets in there, helps calm things down. Good stuff. Take vitamin C. I take a bunch of other things as well. Uh, I'll pop uh, I'll pop some magnesium. I'm sorry, zinc every once in a while if I feel like I'm a little low, if I feel like a little sniffly or something, I'll uh, I'll pop some zinc. If I started feeling like I was coming down with something, I would take zinc lozenges, get the ones by Life Extension, the big, annoying, big, blocky ones. I would take definitely take zinc lozenges. But Ted, there's no evidence that that helps. Yeah, so what? <laughs> right? I'm not going to wait around. Oh, uh, you know, 10 years later, oh, it turns out that there are uh, that zinc lozenges do help with COVID. Maybe they don't help at all. But it's not like I'm hurting myself by doing that. It just costs some money and some irritation because, I mean, if, if you've never had those big blocky lozenges, they're a pain in the, the ass. To, to, they, they take a long time to dissolve. Oh, yeah, And I'll tell you another thing that I do. Again, is this proven by research? No, but I feel it helps. And even if it's placebo effect, I'm going to keep rolling with it. So what I do is this. I get fresh, I make sure I always have fresh ginger and I have ginger every single day. And um, by the way, ginger, whoa, if you got a stomach issue or even gas, it can really help. You got some sort of GI upset going on. It can really help. So what I do is this, I will, t- I will clean the ginger off and then I'll take a big chunk and I'll chew it up in my mouth. And if I have a sore throat, I do this every time I start having that tickling feeling. And I will continue to do that. But it's not proven by research. Yep, exactly. But guess what? Ginger, it's, uh, it's okay, right? And the last thing I want to talk about here is managing your stress. Now we can get into some real talk, right? There's so many people who are stressed out about trying to find a magic solution or the magic supplement routine, or the magic whatever to fighting COVID, and they're not looking, oh, I'm stressed out because I should be dealing with certain problems in my life and I'm just ignoring them. Like, for example, if you're in a situation where financially you're challenged right now, why not put your energy towards trying to find a solution to that problem? When my business had the breakthrough, it was like a weight was lifted 
off my shoulders overnight, literally overnight. Like, whoa, I got money in the bank for the first time in my life after living month to month. Well, not the first time in my life, but first time since I embarked on this journey of transitioning from being a personal trainer in Miami to what do I do now? It was like overnight it happened. I just felt more confident, more calm. And for those of you who have been listening, I'm sure you've noticed a change. Another thing I started doing is I've been, and I've, I, I keep stating this, and some of you are probably tired of hearing it, but I'm going to keep hitting you over the head until it gets through your thick skull because your, your skull, I'm guessing, is almost as thick or perhaps even thicker than mine. I started doing therapy once a week and I've been doing that for six months. Only missed one day, one uh, week. I do it once a week, so only missed one week or one time. That helps so much. She helped me during the separation with Giselle. Giselle is working with someone and that's helping her deal with me. So I know it's hard to believe, but I'm not perfect. Hard to believe, right? So hard to believe. Many problems. <laughs> so it's these things that allow me to create success. And she uh, and my therapist was helping me when I was dealing with my dad and having some of the struggles I've shared with you. That was huge. A lot of my coaching clients tell me, oh, you know, when I'm uh, in the coaching group, it's so beneficial. It's so beneficial. Or my one-on-one coaching clients are like, man, I'm so glad I'm working with you right now. I just, I get on the ball every time that I talk to you. I feel re-energized. I feel like I have strategies. I'm ready to take on the world again. What are you doing to help manage that stress? Because it's the thing that, you know, everyone's like, what are secret strategies and the supplement routines to help with the COVID? It's like, listen, some of that can help, but you really have to look a bit deeper. Because if you're having mental health issues because of the quarantine and, you know, the changes and not being able, or if you're like a wimp like me, like, I can't go on vacation. This is just hurting. This is so stressful. I just want to be on vacation. I worked so hard to make this money to go on vacation. I can't go on vacation. It's please help me. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a reason that you're feeling that way. You've got to find a way to be okay. And you may need help. By the way, I meditate too, right? Probably tired of hearing me say all this stuff, but I keep saying it because it's repetition that will help the, these ideas get through your brain because there is no secret. The secret is to find what works for you and to do it consistently and to really make sure you're challenging yourself because it's not easy to keep. It wasn't easy when um, this whole COVID quarantine thing happened. I was like, should I keep seeing my therapist? What if I'm not, what if my business doesn't make enough money? Uh, and I, you know, I have trouble affording her. What if that puts too much financial stress? And what I found is for me, by continuing to pay her, I continue to manage my emotions better, which allows me to perform at a higher level. And my business ends up going better as a result versus what a lot of people do. They'll run a cost benefit analysis. Like I keep talking about, well, it doesn't make sense to keep uh, paying for therapy when uh, it's these are very uncertain times, and um, we need to cut back. Well, then why are you cutting back on your, you know, on your uh, on your Uber Eats and your wine, or your if you're like me, Blue Label? Actually, I'm not drinking Blue Label, but if you want to take me out on a socially uh, distance, uh, uh, you know, get together sometime and uh, pour me a glass, uh, I'm down for it. But why do you keep paying for those other things and you won't invest in something for yourself? We, especially intelligent people, especially intelligent people who happen to be in left brain careers like uh, engineering, for example, tend to think they're making really good decisions that are based on logic and are free from emotion. But that, my friend, is bullshit. You're making emotional decisions all the time. And if you decide consistently to put self care aside, so that you can afford more supplements or more alcohol or more bullshit, right? Then, then you're making emotional decisions. Not, it's not really a cost-benefit analysis, right? You're not seeing clearly. Regardless of how, <laughs> how robotic you feel, how free of emotional ups and downs you feel. And I wanted to throw that in at the end because I feel like it's really important. So those are the things. 
I'm going to wrap things up now, but those are the things that are important here. The big risk factors for more severe COVID-19 outcomes include age, diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, heart disease, smoking, blood type, obesity, and genetic factors. Not much you can do if you're type A positive or type A negative blood type, and you shouldn't get too cocky if you're type O or positive or type O negative blood type. If you're smoking, quit. If you have, you know, who knows with the genetic factors, we're still, they're still trying to figure that one out. And it seems that genes are always involved no matter what, no matter with whatever you develop. So probably don't spend a lot of time with it until we get more clear on it, because it's always, as the saying goes, genes load the gun, but it's the environment that pulls the trigger. Unless you are, unless you have a disease like Prader-Willi syndrome or Down syndrome, that is, uh, you know, a true de- genetic disorder, uh, or some genetic expert tells you otherwise, focus on the things that you can control. And what we talked about today is we talked about lose fat, manage your blood sugar levels, mostly by losing fat and exercising. If you're exercising, maybe step it up a little bit. If you haven't been doing cardio, maybe add a bit. If you haven't been doing strength training, maybe add a bit. Improve your air quality. If you're smoking cigarettes, well, that's probably the number one thing besides age that will send you to an early grave and make your life miserable along, you know, you know, uh, along the way. But if you're if you're smoking weed or using vapors or vape vape pens or whatever, probably not great. And listen, uh, you know, I enjoy I enjoy a toke now and now and then, right? Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, if you if you're a marijuana user, maybe go to the edibles. Just be careful because you don't want the edibles to, like Joe Rogan said during that stand-up, the gummy bear to steal your soul because it's much stronger when you eat it. But you know, find other options or find a, a, a vape pen that isn't as destructive. I don't know uh, all about that, but a toco I've heard is a really good vape pen. Do your research, figure that one out. But try and and if you're not smoking the the wacky tobacco or smoking cigarettes or whatever, try to improve the air quality as much as you can. Now I'm in Florida; the air quality is quite good here. But if you're in another place where the air quality is bad, it's affecting your lungs all the time, whether you can feel it or not, whether you can sense it or not. So using a HEPA air filter inside your house is going to go a long way. Improve the nutrient quality of your food. The nutrient quality matters as much as the calories and uh, you know the macronutrient distribution. Improve your sleep. If you're finding your, if you're doing things to stay informed and finding that's really screwing up your sleep, that's not a, a good trade-off. There, manage your stress. Right, probably the biggest thing you can do is start to step up in those areas of your life that are keeping you stuck. It's why you're freaking out right now. Build better relationships. Surround yourself with more uplifting and inspiring people and messages. That's why you keep coming back to this podcast, isn't it? If you're not feeling purpose in your life, maybe now is a good time to work on that. What do you need to do to have better relationships with your children? What do you need to do to have better relationships with your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, wherever you are? And of course, the smart supplementation. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking supplements, even if there's no concrete evidence showing that COVID-19 is going to be prevented or cured or helped in any way at all. Uh, Taking vitamin C is inexpensive and uh, presents no big threat to your body from from what we know. So doing all those things, I think, is worth it. But just stay focused on the big picture. All right, that is all I've got for today. Hope you had a great fourth for my American friends. Hope you found this valuable in providing some insight and perspective around the COVID-19 situation and how it's developed. And again, if you want to join my challenge to help you make a comeback, go to legendarylifepodcast.com slash challenge. Join for the next one. And have an amazing week and I'll speak to you on Friday.